Hi guys, Rindle here. Today I want to talk about limit bursts, which ones you should level, which ones are not all that important to level. Uh, before diving into that, you get massively diminishing returns when you invest into a limit burst past the level 10. So getting one to level 10 is only 40 king burst bots, it's not that expensive. A player could easily get all of their limit bursts to level 10 uh, over time, and it's not that big a deal. Uh, getting the, them all to 15 is a little bit tougher, uh, requiring 115 king bot overall for uh, your character. And if you try to get them to level 20, it's 251 uh, king burst bots. It is very expensive. And I don't think it's possible for players, unless they're spending a lot of money to acquire more of those, uh, to actually max all their limit bursts. So you have to pick which ones you want to invest in. Uh, usually, I think investing in the limit burst is much better for a mage or a character with a higher starting AP. Uh, the reason is they are all very AP heavy abilities. And so if you're putting that on your attacker, uh, well, unless they have bells on, they're not going to use it. So you cannot make use of uh, the limit burst for all characters, but since mages have that much AP at the beginning of the fight, uh, they can use them without uh, seriously handicapping their performance. Uh, and then another thing to keep into uh, your mind when you're evaluating it is, uh, does the AI use it often or does the unit need it in its kit? Uh, so if it provides a buff or something that's very important and the AI's always using it first, well, it's probably worth investing into it uh, more quickly because you're gonna get a lot of value out of that. Uh, a prime example is Laswell. Laswell uses his limit burst anytime he can in a fight. Uh, it's like his best ability, or the one he uses most often. So uh, if you're using Laswell a lot, you should level his limit burst. Uh, but that's not the case for all characters. So with that said, let's dive in. The first category I want to talk about is Imperils, or Limit Bursts that uh, enable the rest of your team to deal more damage. Uh, I think these are the best, the ones I love investing in the most, uh, because you're getting two things. You're getting more damage out of your move, that's going to be uh, common alongside all Limit Bursts we see. Uh, but then you also uh, decrease the resistances to something on the enemy, and that's pretty important. Um, the top one that I like the most is Kill Phase Limit Burst, Stave Collector. Uh, so far in the game, it is the only way to decrease magic resistance on a target. And it does so from 18 to 38%, so for every level you give your Limit Burst, you decrease magic resistance by 1% more. Uh, because of that, it's pretty important to get it to 15 or even maybe level 20. Uh, I know mine is at 20 and I have not regretted that. So uh, that's one I love a lot, especially if you're pairing her with other mages so they can all leverage uh, that decreased resistance. Then, Nivlu's Limit Burst is another really, really good one. Now, she is a physical attacker, she will probably need bells if you want to make use of that Limit Burst, but if you do, it's crazy. Uh, you decrease defense in an AoE by up to 35. Again, just like last time, every level you give to that Limit Burst uh, decreases the defense a little bit further, so it has great value if you invest some putts into there. Uh, and decreasing defense by 35 in such a large AoE can be a major game changer. Uh, not only will it allow your team to kill tanks more easily, but also squishier targets will actually have negative defense, uh, so you have a damage amplification effect on them. Uh, then Garvel has a similar thing. I see him use his Limit Burst a lot in fights. It's always one of his highest damage abilities, and I think that's because it uh, increases his Spirit Penetration before dealing damage. Uh, but even if that's not considered, uh, the fact that it decreases Spirit on the targets that it hits is really good. Uh, that means it enables your casters to deal more damage afterwards as well. So these are all pretty good Limit Bursts. I would recommend getting the first two uh, to 20, Garvel's maybe to 15. Then after that, uh, there are the Element Imperils, which are really good. Um, Black Rose Helena is one of them. In a very large AoE, she's going to decrease Dark Resistance and then deal damage. There are a bunch of other characters that can decrease Dark Resistance. Dwayne is one of them with one of his abilities. Uh, but the main reason why I love this so much is, uh, first, it decreases resistance before dealing damage, which means it deals insane damage. Uh, but then, it also does that in a very wide AoE, so you could potentially Imperial Dark on all the enemy team, and then every one of your Dark units benefits from that afterwards. Uh, then Medina's Limit Burst is another one of these. Uh, decrease resistance in a wide AoE, then deal damage. It's basically the same thing, but for ice, so it's also very, very good. Um, 
These two I recommend getting to 20 if they are characters or elements that you use a lot. Uh, the other ones that we see down below are a little bit less good. Uh, they do the same effect. They're going to deal, uh, decrease some resistance and then deal damage, uh, but they are single target, so you don't get as much value out of it. Uh, rain decreases fire resistance, Eileen earth resistance, Howlet wind resistance, so they're all pretty niche. They're going to be great for raids or uh, scenarios where you need as much damage as you can, uh, but a single target in Imperil is not as big a deal. Uh, Yerma's Limit Break is a little bit more unique in that it decreases single target resistance on the target you aim for, up to 38%. Uh, if we had seen this two months ago, I would have put that in my like top 10. Uh, but now it's not as good because we have other characters that can decrease single target resistance and not as a limit burst. Like You can use Xiza's uh, 120 ability, the Debilitating Fist, to decrease that. Or Shadowlink's new ability also decreases single target resistance. So it's not as important anymore. I would say the elemental imperils are really good, and then the ones that I showed previously are the top in terms of imperils, in my opinion. Now, there are a couple other ones that are interesting. I think Raldor, uh, which can decrease strike resistance, can be really, really good if you're playing strike units, which is still a very rare archetype within War of the Visions. Uh, and then Ramada's is pretty weak. It decreases slash resistance by up to 38%, uh, which seems good on paper, but when you realize that other characters can now do that, uh, Kingmont, Gilgamesh, regular Stern, uh, with abilities that are not their limit bursts, I think it's not as worth it. Then we have limit bursts that inflict status effects. Uh, for Imperils, like I said earlier, you really want to get those as high as possible because you're getting two different things that scale. Uh, but for status effects, it's not the case. The damage scales, but the status effect proc chance does not scale. So I don't think you need to level those limit bursts at all. You still get most of the value at level 1. Uh, so Agrius is one of those iconic uh, limit bursts. We've seen it very, very often. If you're an older player, you know what it is. Uh, in a line, it inflicts confusion on everybody. That is really good, but you get all that value at level 1. You don't need it at level 20. It will do a bit more damage, but uh, these characters can do damage in so many different ways. I don't think you need to focus on their limit breaks for that. Um, Kane is a counterexample because he has two things that are scaling in his limit break. The damage, but also by how much the enemy is slowed. So in his case, it's really worth it uh, to crank the level up because you're slowing the enemy more if you do. Uh, and then Ketone, again, counterexample, she uh, deals damage. The damage scales, but the chance to stop does not. So even at level 1, this limit break is top tier. It's going to stop an enemy that's super impactful. You don't need the little bit of extra damage you would get if you were to level it. Now let's look at a couple other ones with status effects. Venera is one of those limit bursts that you will actually want to level. Uh, again, there are two things that are scaling here. The damage, but also how much damage the poison ticks do. So because of that, it's worth leveling it. Uh, Kingmont, the damage scales, but not the berserk chance. And honestly, you're going to use his limit burst for the uh, berserk much more than for the damage. Uh, should you get that move to level 10 for a bit more damage? Sure, level 10 is cheap, uh, but don't go much deeper than that. You're going to spend a lot of uh, king potions and you won't get all that much more value for it. Uh, same goes for Victora. It's a chance to charm. That is so good. Even at level 1, it's one of the best limit breaks in the game. Uh, but since only the damage increases if you level it, don't go past level 10. You don't get much value from that. Uh, and I would say the ones that I show on screen down there are all the same kind of thing. So Cecil can stun, Miranda can confuse, uh, Delita can silence, Lucia can possibly immobilize and disable. They're all good in their own rights, uh, but they are good at level 1. You don't need to invest anything in those limit breaks. Now, there are also a bunch of limit bursts that have some value because they allow characters to do things they cannot do otherwise by giving them buffs. Uh, out of those, I think those that give defense penetration or spirit penetration are my favorite, uh, just because it allows character that uh, can normally not deal damage to tanks easily to do so, and that's really important. Uh, Laswell is a prime example. If he has his uh, limit burst available in terms of AP, he's going to use it every single time. Now that does mean these are characters that need bells in order to use that because they have such a high AP cost that otherwise they're going to run out. 
uh, but they are very good moves. Uh, Laswell is the worst one of the bunch that we see on screen, because it only increases his defense penetration for this one specific attack. So it's a, ma a massive hit once, uh, but then you won't have the defense spent for a couple more turns. Uh, but 9s. It actually increases his defense penetration for three turns, and it's his only defense penetration in his kit, so it's very important. Uh, Oron already has defense penetration, so he can hit tanks, uh, but it just pushes him that much further. And then his is top tier in terms of damage, because it has such a large AoE on top of it, so you can hit several people with that hit. Uh, so, really good limit burst, I would get those to 15, perhaps even 20 if they're characters you're using very frequently. Then, here are a bunch of other ones that I like a lot. Uh, Dwells is the same as what we've seen for defense penetration, but this time it increases her spirit penetration and then deals damage in an AoE. Uh, really top tier, 15 or 20 in terms of level. Uh, then Eldays is an interesting and unique one. Uh, he gains a barrier for three times for self. Uh, that varies between 30% and 50%, and then it also increases his hate. Uh, that's unique, definitely. It's also very strong in the right setup. Uh, I think it's a limit burst that is good at level 1, because even a 30% barrier and 4 hate is good, so you don't have to level it. But if you do, uh, you have two things that scale from the level, and a better barrier and more hate is can be really, really important. So I would at least get that to 10, maybe even 15, uh, but I don't think you need to push it all the way to 20. Uh, and then... Uh, I guess blast from the past, we're seeing Orlando here. Uh, his limit burst is really good if you level it, because not only do you increase the damage, you also increase the haste value, and that's the real uh, gain here. So if you were to have that level 20, his haste is a whole 42% extra speed, uh, but at level 1, only 20%, so it's not a really good haste. So it's the kind of thing that you would want to level to at least 15. And then uh, two other buffs that I don't value as much. Uh, to bees, I don't like. Uh, you're increasing her own slash resist penetration, and that's going to be good against some enemies. Uh, but to be can deal pierce damage and strike damage. She has a lot of other things that she can do. I would say if you're using her in an evasion build in the samurai sub job, uh, it's probably a lot better, because then most of her moves are slashing. But if you're using her as a pugilist, you don't need that at a super high level. I would get it to 15, but don't go all the way to 20 with that. I don't think you'll get great value out of it. Uh, and then Warrior of Light is an interesting one. It's a 3-hit light chain, so that's really cool. Uh, it deals decent damage, and then applies Protect and Shell on him. And since he's a tank, that just makes him that much harder to kill. Uh, and the value of the Protect and the Shell scales, so you should definitely level that. Uh, because you're getting like three things that are scaling from it. So uh, definitely a high value one to level. Uh, again, maybe only to uh, 15 depending on your resources, uh, but you should get it at least to that point. Now, when a limit burst provides nothing but damage, I usually disregard leveling it, because I feel like it's going to be good or bad depending on how much damage it does, but you don't need to invest that much into it. Uh, there are two exceptions to that rule, and that's Yuna and Sakura. Uh, every time they go into a fight, the first thing they're going to do is throw down their limit bursts. That's the way their AI is set up. Uh, so, because they're going to be used so frequently, I think you should level them a little bit. Uh, maybe only to 15 uh, or 10, but at least level them a little bit, because every time they go into a fight, you'll get a bit more damage. I think that's worth. Um, and then there are some limit bursts that are very unique, uh, because they chain. Uh, like, Venera's limit burst uh, is a 3-hit dark chain, Warrior of Light 3-hit light chain. And then um, Tidus has a 4-hit uh, water slash chain, which is really unique. Uh, do you need to level it? No. Uh, the value is the chain, you're going to have that even at level 1, and then the damage is still fine. Um, that's something I guess I forgot to mention. Uh, most limit bursts vary from a 165% to 200% uh, mod. 165 is already among the high uh, modifiers. 200 is really high, uh, but they are not weak moves, even at level 1 in terms of damage. So it's still going to be a competitive option with the other things. So is Tidus's limit burst uh, great? Yes, it is great. Uh, do you need to level it a lot? No, I don't think so. It's going to be good even at low level. 
Another option of those uh, damage-oriented limit bursts that I don't think you need to level but are still pretty good is uh, Dwayne's Limit Burst and Ruin's Turn. Uh, they both deal dark slash damage and then heal you back up. That's really good, you should use that. Uh, but do you need to level it a lot? No, not really. You're still getting some decent value at level uh, 1 or 10. And then finally, here's a bunch of more unique Limit Bursts that I think are very interesting. Uh, Ildira, you've probably seen that strategy a lot if you do manual play, uh, where people will use Ildira's Limit Break to increase your CT uh, alongside the Keen Blade uh, from Rob's DMR, so they can basically get an extra turn on their entire team. Uh, it is a top tier Limit Burst. It increases the turn gauge for everybody affected, which is very, very strong. Uh, this is one that I recommend everybody gets to level 20, because it won't be useful in every single scenario, but when it is, it is unbeatable. So uh, you should level that all the way. Uh, then Ayaka's Limit Burst is a very, very good one, uh, but it's a very good one at level 1. The healing barely scales from 280 to 310, that is not worth your potions. And then it dispels stop, which is good, uh, but I don't think you're going to need the extra stop resistance uh, for three turns. Even a 10% resistance is actually not bad in War of the Visions. 25% resist is great, but honestly, when does stop resistance have such a high impact on your games? I don't think it'll ever really come in handy. So keep that at level one, use it, it's great. Uh, same goes for Rosa's Limit Burst. Uh, the healing barely scales, and then the increased AP scales from 10 to 20. Meh, really, it's not great. Uh, so those healing limit bursts, you should not invest in too much. Now, Whisper's Limit Break is a surprisingly good one, and people might be surprised to hear that, uh, but it decreases bravery in an AoE. And what bravery does is it increases your physical damage and your chance to counter uh, physical sources. At uh, 97 bravery, units have a basically 48% uh, extra damage modifier for their physical attacks. So if you're stripping that away, you're actually taking uh, away roughly like uh, a little bit over a quarter of what a physical attacker will do in damage for the rest of the fight. It is surprisingly impactful if you can land it, uh, especially since she's a tank. So if she has enough AP to use that, well, the rest of your team is going to be even safer from their physical attackers. Uh, and then Halloween the Lila's Limit Burst is a really good one, but it's not one you need to level. Uh, you're getting all the value, even at level 1, it's going to dispel, it's still going to deal really heavy damage, uh, so it's one of those that I don't think you need to invest in, but you should definitely use. So that was it. I think uh, I've put my train of thought pretty clearly. Um, look at what is scaling, and then invest into them if you like it. I think if you have characters that you love a lot, you should just level their limit burst to level 10 immediately. That will not put a major strain on your resources, and you're just going to get a little bit more value out of them. Uh, the real decision is, should you get their limit burst to level 15, and then to 20. Uh, but that was it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and learned a thing or two. If you did, please like and subscribe. And then as always, thank you so much for watching, and have a great rest of your day.